Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Uh, I just wanted to provide a small little news update. I know a lot of other wrestling related content is coming out right now about the events that happened in Jacksonville last night on Dynamite, or they're covering the events that happened over the last three nights between Wrestle Kingdom and New Year's Dash, but I think something that is getting swept under the rug right now that is effective as of today is that the Japanese government has issued a state of emergency in Tokyo and its neighboring respective prefectures. Uh, that goes into effect, as I said today, until February 7th, but could be extended all the way up into March 7th if uh, the conditions continue and the amount of infection continues to rise due to the beer bug. Um, the governors are asking residents to avoid going out past 8 o'clock every night. So this directly affects where they notice the tracing between bars and restaurants. Last call will be issued at 7, and there will be a hard-issued urgency to close their doors at 8. Um, the government has already came out and said those that don't adhere to these guidelines, because there's really no punishments, uh, they will be put on a list. Um, and others that cooperate will be given financial aid respectively since they have to shut their doors and limit their operating hours. Uh, where this affects wrestling though, our venues are going to be capped, very similar to Wrestle Kingdom, at the maximum of 5,000 or 50% occupancy depending on the size of the venue. So at Currican Hall, that would be 50%, but like as we saw at Wrestle Kingdom at the Tokyo Dome, it's a max of 5,000. That's it. Uh, where it's going to affect wrestling companies even more so in those respective prefectures, uh, there'll probably be shifts in the schedule as they're going to probably want to open their doors before 8 o'clock for any events or venues. I'm just more concerned about this because this generated populous area is a 30% of the overall population of Japan. Japan has a population of roughly about 126 million, and 30% of that is in those four respective prefectures. Um, at this point, they're not enforcing anything really strictly uh, on people. They're just strongly urging you not to crowd, mingle, gather, because uh, they notice when people go out, they go to these bars they, they lose a little bit of sight, they get a little buzz, they get a little tipsy, they're not wearing their masks, you know, you're hugging, you're getting too close, they want to eliminate that. So this is just them being proactive in this situation, and I just wanted to present that along with what how it's going to affect Japanese wrestling. You could kind of tell that the wrestlers at the ends of New Year's Dash when they were doing some of their exit interviews or if you will, or some of, with the press, they kind of could tell that this was about to happen and they're not too sure when they will see their fans again. Obviously, there is a slate for New Beginning and the Castle Attack Tour, but depending on how the Japanese government reacts at this time could dictate or affect those tours moving ahead. So just wanted to provide some insight and some thoughts. I really hope that it doesn't hurt New Japan or other respective Japanese wrestling promotions as a whole, that they're able to adhere to the guidelines like they have been for the last years uh, in 2020 and be stewards of wrestling and show how to do it properly. Uh, their fans have been class acts, um, not cheering, not taking off their masks to sing a song or sing along with an entrance theme or act nonsensical. Um, they've really been exemplary when it comes to how fans in the world should dictate themselves. And I hope that these measures can help lower the spread and make things more safe for the upcoming Olympics this summer. So that's the news for now. I hope you guys are staying safe, you're staying healthy. Uh, we're only a couple weeks out from the New Beginning Tour, which is kind of the reset button for this year moving forward in New Japan. So I'm looking forward to some of the little teasers and quibs that were in uh, New Year's Dash paying off in that tour moving forward. We have Inklings that show and Hiromu are going to go at it. We have Okada and Evil starting a new feud and kind of sparking that. We have Tanahashi and Shingo Takagi getting ready to battle for the never open weight title. Uh, we, you know, that's just a couple of things to come. It's going to be very reminiscent of how it was last year. A lot of the guys that are foreign talent in New Japan are heading back home. You're seeing a lot of the videos. I'm just wondering who's going to decide to stay because a couple of these groups have had tenure there for the last couple months and I'm pretty sure they want to see their families 
uh, because they weren't there during the holiday season. Guys like G.O.D., uh, Chase Owens um, is getting to go back home. Tox Fale is leaving. Uh, you probably have Jeff Cobb going back home t- as well. So I hope that their travel back to the States here is safe and they can just rejoin their families, regroup, rest, and hopefully cooler heads prevail in Japan and we get a nice little uh, healthy respite before they start the G1 and other events throughout the course of the year. So that's the news for now. Please, if you like these videos, put comments in the discussion below, share, like, subscribe, do all that whole bit. But more importantly, it's a discussion that I want to keep centered on New Japan Pro Wrestling. It seems there's a lot of other social media outfits that proclaim that they talk about New Japan and then suddenly it just becomes this giant subreddit of nothing about everything but New Japan Pro Wrestling. So, as always, thanks for watching and keep it too sweet.